Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to be looking at the plugin that Bluebeam places within several programs. Three of these programs are AutoCAD, Revit, and Excel. This plugin is only available to review CAD and review Extreme. Let's look at AutoCAD first. We can go to our Output tab, and here we can create a PDF immediately. We can give it a name, and it will automatically open Bluebeam Review if it's not already open, and you can view the PDF and start working on it there. We can modify the settings of our PDF. For example, if we like the name of either our file name or our layout name, we don't need to prompt for file name. So unchecking this will automatically allow the PDF to be created without having to click on a second button. So this is another way to expedite the process. We can also choose what to plot. We don't need to plot everything, or we can plot layouts or model views. We can transfer specific data from our CAD file. So any hyperlinks and block attribute data can be brought into Bluebeam, and it's gonna become smart vector data that we can use in our PDF. We can also change the quality of our print. We can either print or make a draft. A draft has a smaller file size and is a great way to send quick PDFs over email. And we can change our dots per inch, so we can change it from 300 up to 1,200. Under page setup, you might notice that our settings here are very similar to AutoCAD's print settings. So if we go to custom, we can actually modify the same exact settings that you would see from within AutoCAD when you're trying to make a PDF. But these are specifically for a Bluebeam PDF, so this is a great way to modify it. Under PDF security, we can choose to require a password to open our document, and we can use a password to enable certain permissions. So if we want people to print, but we don't want them to, allow, to make any changes to our document, we can uncheck all of these settings and still allow them to print our PDF. This is great for submittals. Under our bookmarks tab, we can enable bookmarks, and we can create bookmarks automatically from lots of metadata from within AutoCAD. If we want to use our drawing name as a bookmark, that's a good way. We can also use our layouts and only use them independently or together if we wanted to. And that way our layouts would be subheadings from within the actual file itself. Then we can create our PDF from within the settings, just like we would if we created, clicked on the Create PDF button right here, and we're ready to go. Let's look at the batch dialog. It's gonna ask us to save our drawing first. That's a pretty good idea. And we can create a new batch, which will allow us to open specific DWGs, multiple DWGs all at once, and make PDFs from them very quickly. We don't have to open each DWG individually, hence the batch features are here and ready to be used. We can also make a very fancy PDF called a 3D PDF. So if we have a 3D model, we can easily create a 3D PDF and rotate around it in all 360 degrees. In our 3D settings, we can see that we can choose which views we want to import. They could be all of them, or it could be only a few views. We can choose our page size, lighting scheme, and rendering mode. So we can go from solid to wireframe if we wanted to. Let's look at Revit now. We can go to our add-ins tab right here, and we can also create a PDF very quickly. And let's look at some of the settings. There are some similar settings amongst Revit and CAD. So we can once again prompt for file name. One file per sheet view could be quite useful if you want each sheet to be its own individual PDF. That could be nice, or you can uncheck that and allow all of your sheets to be put into one PDF set or um, page set. We can choose what to plot. It could be our current view. It could be all sheets or specific views and sheets. So it could be a sheet set if we wanted to. We can transfer specific data, very similar to CAD, but there are some different options here. And we can also choose our print quality just like before. Page setup is similar. We can basically see that this is very similar to making a PDF from within Revit, except this is in particular for PDFs that will go and open in Bluebeam. And PDF security is basically the same. We can require passwords. Bookmarks are interesting. We can allow our project and drawing data to be used or just drawing data, for example. And we can include our page number and file extensions, which was extra metadata that could be used in our PDF once we open it in review. 
We can also make a 3D PDF from within Revit. And you can see that the settings are very similar. We can choose our lighting and rendering mode, for example. And we can even use section boxes and polylines. So it's quite useful to make a nice 3D PDF of your 3D model, especially since everything in Revit is basically 3D. Let's look at Excel now. This is going to be quite different. Bluebeam makes its own tab in Excel right here. And let's look at some of our settings. You can see that there's some similarities in the settings here. We can choose how it's going to print. Our hyperlinks can be turned into bookmarks if we wanted them to. And we can print specific sheets, the entire workbook, or active sheets. Our page setup is here, and PDF security just like before. Now, there is something that we can do in review if we want to take our data in review and move it into Excel. I've kind of shown this in a previous video, but I'd like to show it to you guys once again. We can open up our markups list. All we need to do is either click on the markups button right here, or we can click on the divider that's in between the status bar and the rest of the program right here. We can click on the summary button right here, and we have two different ways to take all of our data in the markups list and put it into our summary. Either a CSV summary or an XML summary can be done. CSV is a very simple one, so I'm going to make one right now. And you might have noticed that I had one in Excel just now. So I can choose what kind of data I want to bring into Excel. CSV is very simple. It's going to have all of the basic information that you need. And here it is. It's now basically made a very similar PDF, uh, Excel file or spreadsheet that I had before. And if you see any issues like this, for example, with the dates, you just need to open up the column. And you can now see all that information right here. From within Excel, you can also click on some data or highlight a lots of data, and you can right-click, and you can do something called a quantity link. Actually, you can only do it for one cell, not all cells. A quantity link will allow you to take your data and then bring it back into review if you need to. So there's a way to take your data from review to Excel and vice versa. We're going to go into quantity link in another video at another time. Now, to manage your plugins, or if you don't see your plugins in these programs, you need to open what's called the Bluebeam Administrator. So all you need to do is type it in right here. The Bluebeam Administrator is this function right here. And you can find a list of all the different plugins here. So if you have a program that has a plugin that Review supports, you'll find it here. What you need to make sure is, you need to make sure that your program is compatible with Review's plugin. So certain newer versions of programs will not work with Review's plugin, depending on if they've released a plugin for that program. A good example of this is AutoCAD and Revit 2021. They were released relatively recently from the recording of this video. And right now, Review does not support those programs, and the plugin will not work in those programs. So I have AutoCAD 2020 and Revit 2020, and Review works great in those programs. If you don't see a check in the box next to the program, just make sure that you check it. And if you need to kind of do a refresh, you can uncheck and recheck it. Make sure that the program is closed before making any more changes and click apply and then OK. If the program is open when you do this, it might not work. And that is how you can manage your plugins from within several programs that Bluebeam Review supports. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.